what is a healthy growth? When the growth starts to taper off, leaders try two different approaches broadly. First, they try to introduce new products or services or they try to relaunch some of their existing uh, products with new features. Sometimes it works, but the success rate is very less. And the second approach, the second commonly used approach is to offset for the revenue loss uh, from existing clients uh, by acquiring new clients, by new client acquisition. But this comes with two caveats. The cost of acquiring a new client, I'm sure you're aware, is at least 10 to 15 times more than the cost of retaining an existing client. And another big problem with this approach is that it's overly dependent on new client acquisition for meeting your growth needs, growth targets. And in doing so, the sales and marketing teams get desperate and they end up acquiring clients that don't necessarily fit into your organization's uh, value proposition, your organization's uh, positioning. They project a premium gold standard uh, when it comes to delivery and service. As a result, over a period of time, the company ends up with a very diverse base of clients with each client different from the other, but all of them have very high expectations from you. Now, this is good, but from a business standpoint, from a business perspective, now we have a large base of clients with very small contribution to the revenue. Now, what does this do? This puts a lot of stress on the delivery teams because the volumes from these clients aren't very high. Uh, over a period of time, it becomes very difficult to sustain the gold standard that we promised in the beginning. You see, whether the client gives you 4% contribution to your overall revenue, 40%, you need to have a SPOC. You need to have regular reviews. You need to send out monthly decks. You need to visit the client regularly and so on and so forth. So ultimately, uh, it's not only something that's hurting your business, but the clients are also unhappy. Another thing, uh, you know, from a business standpoint is that, you know, new clients hardly generate the revenue to the full scale in the first few years. So even when you acquire new clients for offsetting the revenue lo loss that you have from your existing clients, uh, you don't get enough uh, out of that. You need to acquire many more new clients. So don't get me wrong because uh, the way I'm presenting, you should not get a feeling that acquiring new clients is not important. That's not what I'm saying. It's very important for an organization's growth. But when it is used to offset the revenue lost from existing client, uh, that's a real problem that needs to be addressed. And that needs to be addressed immediately. As per Ram Charan, the famous management guru, uh, he says that the revenue share from existing relationships to new relationships, new clients, the revenue share should be somewhere around 60 to 40 or sometimes even 70 to 30. That means a larger proportion of your revenue should actually be coming from your existing clients and not your new clients. Is that the case in your organization? You need to examine that. Now, imagine, wouldn't it be nice uh, if you have fewer accounts where we have strong strategic collaboration and uh, those accounts are contributing to a large proportion of your revenue? It's easy to scale, it's easy to manage, uh, and you can also do a lot of wonderful things for the client. Am I right?